Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Vectra AI podcast. I say back because I'm optimistic that you're watching the other episodes. <laughs> but if this is your first episode uh, that you're watching of the Vectra AI podcast, this is a, uh, a you know, a kind of we sit down and, with members of the product team and we just talk about stuff, right? <clears throat> Have candid conversations about things and and stuff like that. And John's been a regular guest on the show, um, as has Fabian. And, you know, I want to talk about today. We're going to, I brought John back to talk about <clears throat> something we've done a couple episodes about. Um, for those of you that are back, uh, for those of you that aren't, I should encourage you to watch these other two. But we had John in earlier to talk about Gen AI attacks in general, <clears throat> um, which she'll touch on a little bit more today or, you know, give a little refresher on that. Um, as well as I had Fabian on earlier, uh, and Fabian was on um, on one of the shows talking about the the Palo Alto CVE 2400 or uh, 2024 3400. Um, I think he may have talked about Midnight Blizzard, or was that you, John? I don't know which one. I think it was Fabian. Um, <laughs> we talked about we talked about Copilot as a M365 as an attack surface. So logically, I'm like, okay. Vectra's talked about Gen AI driven attacks. We've talked about this co-pilot attack surface. Now it's logically, you know, our audience is probably like, great, Vectra, what are you guys doing about it? So naturally, I'm like, okay, John, <laughs> come back on the show and let's talk about what we're doing about, um, you know, Gen AI attacks and, and M365 co-pilot as an attack surface. So John, thanks again for, for coming back on the show and sharing your wisdom. Oh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Let me level set. So go listen to the other podcasts. The best way to kind of catch up. But real quick, the statement is Gen AI is now part of the enterprise. This is the world that we are in today. And this is where we're going to be for the foreseeable future, where AI is going to be sitting right next to all of us as we do our work. And really the kind of marquee space that we're seeing AI in the enterprise getting adopted the most is this Microsoft functionality called Copilot for Microsoft 365. This is AI enhancement to the whole Microsoft suite of apps that I personally touch every day. So Excel, Teams, SharePoint, you know, all these functions that we're using, plus uh, a chat window that I can talk with and leverage, ask questions about data, about the enterprise that I'm working in that all our customers that we see right now adopting this can do, that is kind of the future. And on that, our customers adopting it, we're seeing a large scale usage of Copilot across our customers. About 40% of the enterprises that we're monitoring identities for, we're seeing cases of Copilot being used today. And this has been out for only a few weeks, honestly, at this point. Yeah, that's either indicative of value or a high degree of interest. In employee exactly. productivity, enterprise productivity, et cetera, which I think you're touching on here. So and that and that's the thing is ultimately why people are investing this is that from an end user space, it increases massive value. But the truth is anytime there's new technology being adopted, we end up seeing attackers finding a way to bring it into their fold. And that's exactly what kind of in the other podcast we talk about. But just in brief, essentially, Gen AI is being used in the beginnings of an attack, but attackers are also have the ability to get in, compromise an identity in an enterprise, and then use this enterprise level AI against the defenders, essentially living off the land, driven by things like Microsoft Copilot. In the last podcast, we talked through an entire attack scenario that, that kind of is embedded with this uh, from Gen AI at the start to entering an enterprise and abusing the enterprise level Gen AI against the defenders. And so we see this, we see this adoption of Gen AI in the enterprise. We see attackers and their opportunity to use it against defenders. And ultimately this is a place where in order to be effective against these attackers, where they've got AI on their side, they've got our own AI being used against us, you need to be fast. This is an area where we know we can help. We have the ability, we've seen it consistently, to allow defenders to respond in real time to stop an attacker in this type of sequence before damage is done. And so what we're wanna kind of, uh, you know, tee it off in a second, 
you know, show you what we're doing here ultimately to respond to this. Yeah, so Gen AI or so just make sure you're we're, we're clear on what we're we're talking about because there's a there's the use of Gen AI or LLMs for the purposes of investigation, which are fantastic. Like they help security analysts yeah. be more productive. Microsoft has their co-pilot for you know, security co-pilot. You know, uh, the CrowdStrike has Charlotte. There's there's different implementations of LLM for the purposes of helping the security analyst. Um, and you know, the, so John kind of alluded to, it's about moving faster, both on the enterprise side, the employee side, and the attacker side. So inside Vector, we're, you know, we're, you know, kind of rooted in AI detection. It's like, can we detect these things faster? It's one thing to investigate and respond as fast as you can, and, and, and LLMs can help with that, obviously. But when it comes to, um, even when it, when, it, when the attacker gets in, uh, leveraging uh, AI, obviously, and then progressing their attacks, how soon or how quickly can you detect that and prioritize it in order to investigate and respond as quickly as possible? So we're kind of shifting left a little bit in that attacker yeah. uh, workflow, but John, I'll let you kind of give an example of, of how this manifests. Yeah, so we're really excited about this. So I'll, I'll play out an entire scenario here for you to really understand kind of what it is that kind of we have in, in the works here to, to really solve this problem for folks. So what you're seeing is the Vectra console here. What is top of mind here is you're seeing two entities. First entity, nick at ficto.com. This entity has been prioritized in the Vectra console with an urgency score of 98. So it's emerged as a threat. And it's been emerging as a threat because it's got this profile, this usability function that we call of copilot compromise. And the reason why it's been labeled that, the reason for that score, is ultimately the collection of attack behaviors that we've seen associated with this. We saw compromise access, we saw suspicious access into Copilot itself. We saw Copilot being used in the enterprise against it to search against sensitive data, secrets, passwords, stuff that lets them dig deeper, ultimately into the enterprise and still persistence. All this ultimately allows a defender to quickly see an attack and then respond and authoritatively respond by taking decisive action, locking account with the ability to stop a threat like this. Any identity threat, you can take that response regardless of cloud, network, wherever. But the value ultimately doesn't stop there. In our discover functionality, which we just recently updated, we have the option to understand who's using Copilot even before a user gets compromised. So you understand the surface here, you understand who are the power users, what type of data they're interacting with, all the things that let a defender be prepared to stop an attack. And the other aspect of this is all the data that feeds both the detections, this investigation workflow, all this is available for investigation purposes, to dig deeper, to understand the identities, the interactions, all this is available to dig and really understand so that ultimately any threat that's facing an identity where the identity is abusing Gen AI in the enterprise, Vector has the ability to respond and stop that type of threat. Great. Fantastic. So from like Discover, which would be, let me play it back to you. Discover would be, hey, what does my co-pilot attack surface look like? Like in a nutshell, like where is the potential exposure, adoption of it, use of it, et cetera. All the way into, okay, Co-pilot compromise, if you look at the attack profile here, is like, OK, this is indicative of of an attack that is abusing co-pilot and amongst other things, right? Or or to do other things, right? Yeah. If I'm reading that back to you, correct? All yeah, the way through that's absolutely to, it. Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's key because the thing that's really unique and special, and this is about how Vectra handles identity overall, is the ability to see where the identity is, if it's using Copilot, if it's using Azure AD, if it's using AWS, Vectra sees all of that and is able to prioritize against it. And so Copilot as another area attackers might be looking to live off the land and abuse, it's another type of identity activity that Vectra can help and respond quickly against. Fantastic. I'm sorry, we're well, gonna touch on something else. I think I think the only other thing is that just to kind of give a you know broad level summary of what we're talking about here in terms of functionality. 
just if it wasn't kind of, you know, there's questions versus what we showed in that demos, what's new here? So there's a lot that we see is kind of the ability to help here. So new coverage related to that access, the discovery, and also things like jailbreaking, like a really kind of nuanced way that LLMs get abused that we're seeing active. All this, as I said, integrates with the existing vector AI platform as it relates to identity and that prioritization. So AI prioritization, AI filtering of benign behaviors, all in play here as we look at this type of functionality. And then on the control side, just like you said, audit copilot usage, and then integrated response, that lockdown functionality that came through there, as well as that investigation metadata that comes in that control that piece there. Fantastic. So there you have it, staying true to our three C's, coverage, clarity, and control. Coverage, you know, do you have visibility into the attack surface? That's what we, we talk about coverage. Do you have, you able to detect, right, these attacker behaviors? Clarity, um, you know, we call it attack signal intelligence, the correlation of, of different attacker behaviors, different detections, different events that happen, um, and, and, and delivering a prioritized signal. So on that slide where, we're on the demo where John showed the respond interface and the score of 90 something. That's clarity. That's like, hey, this is where you need to focus. Drill into this and then ultimately control is that ability to investigate and, and respond as quickly as possible by putting all of that contextual data in one place. Um, so you know exactly what response to take confidently, competently, um, as quickly as possible. So fantastic, um, John. I appreciate the quick run through. Awesome. So, um, check out our other podcast. Thanks everybody for tuning in to this one. Um, this is exciting news. Uh, more to come on this. I'm sure we'll dive in even deeper in future episodes. We've got a slew of topics out there. So, if this is your first kind of, uh, you know, view of our podcast, check out our other ones. We've got a, quite a few of them out there, and more to come. Um, John's a regular, he's a regular guest on this. Um, I'm, I think I'm on most of them, but I, it's probably have to mix it up and bring some other people on with some different <laughs> perspectives than me, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll keep it fresh for you guys and appreciate you tuning in. John, thanks again for, uh, taking the time. We appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Thanks everybody.